This year has been an amazing year for travel. I've spearfished in 10 different countries, but as they say, there's no place like home. This is the ninth year that I've called the United Kingdom my home and each and every year I love the diving more and more and this year is no exception. Now every time I go spearfishing I don't make a YouTube video but generally I have a camera so I'm going to showcase some of my favourite moments from the year that haven't been on the channel yet. The last one is my absolute favourite. I couldn't quite believe it when it happened but stick around for that. Typically, I don't start diving in the UK until around April time when the weather warms up a little bit. But this year, there was an amazing weather window in February. And with a little help from Kevin Daly, he tipped us off on where we might find some fish. Andrew and I took the day off to go for a dive on a very brisk February morning. And Kevin was right. We found loads of fish. We're shore diving at one of our favorite places and Andrew and I had no fish in the freezer. So when we started diving and seeing these black bream, we got to work. It's a nice one, mate. Yeah, yeah, I got it. It's a lovely February morning here off the south coast of England. Water temperature is about 9 degrees, it's not too bad, not too warm. Finding lots of black bream today, which is really nice to just do something other than crabs and scallops at this time of year. I was wearing a 9.5mm jacket, the water was about 8 or 9 degrees. We're diving 15 to 20 meters. It may seem like a lot of wetsuit, but nothing beats being super warm when you're sitting on the bottom at 20 meters, looking at these shoals of black bream, trying to pick out a big one. As it always does, the tide started running and we had very limited time left. I wanted to leave on a high note, so I dived down and I'm still not quite sure how this happened. Of course, not wanting to leave on a miss, and I was really pushing my luck with the tide here, I headed back down for one more dive. I think this was the ocean's way of telling me my time was up for the day. After that awesome dive in February, I was super fired up. I was convinced that the diving season had started. It was on, it started early. So I headed out for another dive in March and it turned out to be one of the biggest flops I have ever had on a dive in the UK. I swam over a mile offshore and the water was seven degrees and nature called. That was a horrible experience having to do an aqua turd. And the water's actually seven degrees here. Oh, cannot find my genitalia at all. 
April finally rolls around and the water hits that magical 12 degrees, which means fish, but also the plankton bloom that happens on the south coast of England. This means that the visibility in the water is going to be absolutely horrendous. Even though it's sunshine reggae, it might be very tempting, which I was tempted. You know the visibility is going to be pants, but I went anyway. It didn't look too bad on the surface, but once you get down to 17 meters, it's very dark because the plankton bloom blocks out so much of the light. This is where a handheld GPS on your float comes in very, very handy because if you know the spot, you've got it marked and you can just head back to the spot where you know the fish are going to be instead of diving around in really bad visibility and wasting a whole heap of time. I hit the spot and it was a big strain on my eyes to see. The camera makes it look a lot better than it actually was. It was very dark, but I saw a couple shapes and I knew these were going to be black bream. So I let fly and put some runs on the board. I was with my good mate, Ben, and he is not so comfortable in 15 to 20 meters, let alone 15 to 20 meters in poor visibility. So I said, I'll have a few more dives out here, see what I can see, and then we'll head back in a bit shallower. This dive was just pure luck. I was super stoked to find this coal fish in the Merck because it's only the second one I've shot in the UK. They're not very common on the south coast of England, but they are very delicious, so I'll take them if I find them. I decided that was probably the best I was going to do, so we headed into the shallows and shot a few wrasse to make some ceviche. I binned off the rest of April until May and then had a really great dive with Andrew Gom and I'll put a link to that video here somewhere. But after that, we decided, hey, there's so many fish out at the moment after the bloom, let's go again. And we did a midweek trip, but there just wasn't nearly as many fish. I must have done about 20 dives before I found something I wanted to shoot for dinner and I managed to get my first bass of the season. This year I actually changed my spear guns up from my carbon fiber spear guns that you've probably seen on the channel in years gone by to just very basic aluminum rail guns, a 75 and a 90. This day with the Viz being so good, I used my 90 and I tell you what, having a 90 in the UK is really handy to snipe fish like black bream. Now the reason I changed and the reason I'm saying that a 90 seems like a big gun for me is because previously the gun that I thought was an 85 was closer to about a 65 when you compare it to a traditional rail gun. So I've been shooting for the last six years with a really, really small spear gun in this country, but with a 75 and a 90, it's the perfect combination for me. June rolls around and the weather is absolutely stunning. Sunshine reggae, flat seas, good visibility. So Kevin and I are going for an afternoon dive. Sadly, he got held up at work, but I said, I'll meet you out on the reef because I want to hit the best part of the reef at the best part of the tide. And this was my first dive. <laughs> First dive of the day and there are bass just sitting in the hole looking at me. Quite an easy target, but it's not always like this. You could dive 50 times before you see something like this. So don't let it confuse you. Don't let it give you the impression that spearfishing is always like this and you always find bass on the first dive. It's just not like that. Very lucky, but also very happy to be very lucky on this occasion. After seeing free swimming bass everywhere after this, I decided to go check out a really cool archway that I've 
marked and had in my GPS for a number of years and I've shot a couple of bass out of it, the biggest one about six and a half pounds, but this time I decided to approach it from a different angle and it paid off. As soon as I dived, I saw two bass escaping to my left and I continued slowly through the archway. With two bass on my stringer, I finally find Kevin out there and he's keen to test out this new spear gun of mine. So I hand him over my spear gun and pick up the camera instead because if there's one thing I've learned over the years, dive with people that are better than you and watch what they do. Try and emulate that because it will surely bring you more success when spearfishing. Kevin is a phenomenal spearfisher. He has amazing fish sense and his breath hold is extremely long, which actually made it quite difficult for me to film him at times because my breath hold is not quite at his level yet. May not ever be, who cares? But I still managed to get a few clips of Kevin in action. Just watch and observe. Notice how everything he does is super slow and calm, even the way he uses his hand under his waist to balance as he crawls along the bottom so his fins don't scrape and make any noise. He was actually testing out my 75 and much to my disgust, would not pull the trigger on this small bass that was practically kissing the end of his shaft, despite being legal. I had to leave Kevin because I had to get back home and he later told me as soon as I left his very next dive, he shot a nice bass. That's always how it goes when you're filming someone. Very tedious work. Now I never like to waste a good run of weather so I got out again as soon as possible and I went to a different area in hopes that it would be just as fishy as the last dive but it wasn't quite as fishy but there was still some fish around including this bass in a hole. Shortly after, I was exploring another area on this reef that I'd never been to before, looking in all these holes. And as I surfaced, I looked down and I saw this pretty cool piece of rock. And I thought, that looks like it would have bass in it at some stage. And as I was looking down, a nice five pound bass sticks its head out and comes out of the hole. And I thought, well, it's now or never. Shooting down on bass like that is my least preferred shot because they are a lot skinnier from the top down profile than they are broadside. But with two bass on my stringer, I could not complain. Bass limit done, time to head in. I work as a freelance cinematographer for a day job, which essentially means I make pretty moving pictures of people. So the holy grail of jobs came up for me in August. It was a shoot by the coast, morning shoot, half day shoot, 
with fantastic weather. I don't think I've ever packed down at the end of a shoot quite as fast as this because the conditions were mint and I was frothing to get out there. Conditions today are absolutely primo. I cannot remember the last time I was swimming out here and could see the bottom the whole way out. Very excited for what today's going to hold. I dived for about two hours without even seeing a hint of a bass, just these red mullet. I decided to follow the reef to a place I've never been before and it's paid off big time. Right now, I was regretting switching to the 75 as I had a lot of distance to close. It turns out I was actually more than close enough and with the fish being on the shooting line, it tangled me up in this undercut. some fish but finally came under a nice ledge saw two one came out a bit further but one was a bit more relaxed so I decided to try and get a bit closer with my 75 and whoa that was a massive crack of lightning Whew. the thunder and lightning was a little bit concerning and I probably should have taken down my one meter carbon fiber pole on my float Nevertheless, I wanted to check out this hole from a curiosity perspective because I'd never seen it before, but I could not believe that this was the very next dive. been a while since I've shot a nice bass like that. Easily my biggest this year. Same hole. <laughs> I was just going to check it out one more time, see if there's anything else in there. This guy just marched on in with another one. Maybe it was the one I saw before, but <laughs> super happy with that. As fast as the squall came in, it left without a breath of wind. These conditions are absolutely stunning doesn't happen often like this but when it does oh, so still and calm <sighs> love it That was actually the last dive I had for the summer in the UK because on the 1st of September, my wife Hannah and I, we got in our car and drove from London all the way to Bodrum in Turkey, which is actually crossing continents. You will have seen some of those videos popping up on the channel over the past few months. And we're picking that up again in 2024. So next stop, Albania then Turkey, then Bulgaria, three places I'm extremely excited to share on this channel. So I would love you to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you get notified when those videos come out. Thanks to everyone out there that has supported the channel this year, whether that's commenting, liking, sharing with your friends or buying a t-shirt off diveoverair.co. I appreciate each and every one of you. Merry Christmas. See you in 2024.